So back when I was like 19, we had uh, pretty much a very active party life. I mean, everything um, was just great in this small town that I lived in. And it was uh, it was amazing. All the parties were, you know, at my house. Everything was uh, um, just totally surrounded by popularity, by, um, you know, just all my friends were just amazing and I had you know I just I just worked and drank and had fun and and that was it but then in 1989 um I had a grand mal seizure when I was at work after a hard night of drinking and then so I um had to go get some follow-up stuff you know my doctor told me they said well usually you know you get uh MRIs done they don't find anything you know amongst epileptic seizures but we're going to start you on an epilepsy medicine um, and, uh, everything's going to be okay, you know, and I knew when I went and got the, uh, my first, well, it was actually a CAT scan or a CT scan. I went in and, uh, the guy that, uh, um, was giving me that CT scan had a really stupid sense of humor like mine. And we were just joking and laughing and, you know, prodding each other and, uh, harassing each other. And then as soon as we were done, he wouldn't even talk to me. It was really strange. He just, it was just like he found out his grandmother died or something. He just was not acting right. And I, I just figured it was his issue. And, uh, then, uh, the day following that, I got a phone call at work from my doctor and he said, Dan, you know, we found a cyst on your brain. It's the size of a chicken egg. It takes up one sixth of the left side of your brain. We don't know if it's cancer or not. Uh, and the best thing we can do is, uh, look at it again in 90 days and kind of hung up the phone on me. And it was one of the craziest moments, you know, of, of my life. Cause you know, being, being that age, you know, 19, 20 years old, you don't, you're not planning on your death. You're planning on your future. The whole, everything is in front of you. And then all of a sudden in a split second, it wasn't. So... I had to go um, tell my parents. That was one of the hardest things, you know, because that's not usually the kind of parents kids have to go, you know, tell their parents and things like that and, and what was going on. And, you know, and just back then you couldn't uh, t test uh, for cancer through blood. It was just you had to, you know, I had to wait. And um, it was an adjustment. I mean, I felt, you know, of course, you kind of feel sorry for yourself for about a week. But then I was just like, you know what? You know, I'm just going to live my life um, to the fullest and enjoy it. And uh, with what time I have left. But one other thing that had changed all of a sudden is because I had to, you know, give up drinking immediately. Um, at least I... I was kind of looking for an excuse to quit anyway, and that was that was a good enough excuse. So I quit drinking, and uh, but the amazing thing was, is it's the the party at my house was over. It was done. You know, all of a sudden it was uh, crickets, man. I was just sitting there by myself. They just moved the party to somebody else's house and just kept on going. And uh, I was. Uh, Anytime I thought about drinking or anything like that, I just thought about that phone call, you know, to the doctor and everything. So it was a huge adjustment. And uh, um, you see this in life, though, you know, the, you're, you think you're that important to the party life and this, that, and you know, it ain't, it, they it don't freaking matter. They're just going to move on. And, and the other thing I noticed, uh, you know, because some, some friends didn't know what they knew the old me and so on and and they'd be like you know hey can i buy you a beer and i'd be like no i don't drink anymore and the first thing they'd say is like oh uh, yeah, yeah i'm thinking about quitting too you know but they were it, they had no intention of quitting and i didn't give a shit if they did or they didn't it didn't bother me that they were drinking but um i was uh i became uh something that uh made them look at themselves and they didn't like that at all you know when i i quit drinking so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it was just really, uh, surreal, really strange thing, but, you know, it turned out that, um, down the road that this cyst and my, and my additional, um, you know, CT scans and stuff that I had was, you know, they just said, well, this is obviously, it's not cancer. It is a, 
uh, you know, assist that you've probably had since birth. And this is also a message to, you know, people that smoke because they said this could be caused by your mother smoking while you were in the womb. But that was back when smoking was cool. So anyway, but it, it was just, uh, you know, seems safe for now, you know, and and I remember um, the following Halloween, I was like, well, you know, I cool, I can go back to being me again. I can go back to drinking and I can go back to doing all this shit. And then um, when I got, when it came down to it, you know, I, I poured the beer in, in a glass and thought about it for a second there. And then I just remembered that phone call. I was just like, uh, wow, man, you know, nah, I, I need to take a break for a little while longer. I didn't know how long that was going to be, but it turned out that it was uh, 23 years before I had another beer. And, uh, so now, you know, it was just, uh, one of those things that was kind of, uh, you know, just gave me the, um, ability to recognize my own mortality. I'm not invincible and I'm not so important to this world that, you know, this, that they're going to miss me when I'm gone or whatever, you know, in time they'll be forgotten just like everybody else and stuff like that. But it's, it's really important that you live for the moment and treat people good now while you can, uh, don't show people respect at funerals. They don't give a shit. They're dead. You know, they don't really care. Show people respect when they're alive, do things that are going to make you feel at peace when that person dies. Because 90% of funeral stuff, it's, it's a lot of people that did bad things or had shortcomings with that person. And they're going there to clear their own conscience. They're not, you know, it's not as much to, to pay respects for the dead. But, this, you know, the second one... You know, somebody dies, it just hits you like a ton of bricks and you remember everything you didn't do or should have done. And and it's, a, you know, it's kind of a nightmare, but, you know, live for the moment and uh, enjoy life and don't take a single day for granted. You know, I'm um, 23 years after I had, um, they found this cyst, I had it removed um, and the trauma to my brain was, um, it took me about a year to recover from and, and, but I got through it and then I was having all these issues, um, that, um, just kind of went away after about a year. I, I just kind of got healed up and, and things. And then, um, for the next 10 years, I was getting, uh, MRIs done about every, uh, third year or so first every year then every third year and stuff like that and then about two weeks ago I went and got a um another MRI done and uh I was supposed to get some other tests done and things like that and then I got a phone call the next morning and they're like hey you know we need to see you right away and I was like oh man not again um, because I knew they weren't calling me in early to pat me on the back because I got t great test results or anything like that I knew that they're it had to be a problem, and I, when I went in, um, the doctor had told me, and family doctors can only tell you so much, they told me, hey, you know, you got a cyst on your brain, and we found another one, um, and, you know, it's got to come out, and um, they kind of stressed urgency about it and things like that, and then, of course, there was only so much they could say. They're, they're like, well, it's putting pressure on your brain stem, you know, and the doctor kind of patted on, you know, on the back of her neck when she was talking about the brain stem. Well, uh, so I assumed that the cyst was on the back side of the brain. And, but it's actually um, when I uh, went to the neurologist, uh, you know, about uh, four or five days later, they told me and showed me this, this cyst is actually on the inside of my brain. I mean, like dead center in my brain. And it is uh, wrapped around the major artery and putting pressure on the stem from the inside of the brain out. And now I'm scheduled to see a, a neurosurgeon. I got to meet two of them on the 3rd of August. But, uh, 
and part of it's you know surreal i mean it is i you know i'm kind of like a you know feel like stick in the mud i want to you know keep planning you know stuff for the future and doing all these but it's all of a sudden it's just like i'm uh just kind of reliving a lot of what uh you know, I went through back in 1989 when the when I they first found the original one. But uh, I'm just uh, it, it's in, I'm in check. You know, getting this thing out of my head is going to be extremely difficult. Um, it's going to be extremely difficult just to get to the damn thing. You know, let alone um, any of the other issues. You know, and uh, and it's you know they give you a list of like four thousand things that can go wrong you know, you can go come out blind, you can come out, you know, with paralysis, you do, you know, just generally the stem of the brain in this area, you don't freaking want to mess with, but now that's what I'm faced with. So, um, again, big adjustments in life. Um, my popularity, you know, having, you know, worked on, on dances with wolves and, and Gettysburg and McGruber and, um, uh, walk, ride, rodeo and, uh, you know, outer range you know with josh brolin and all these films little little doodads you know stuff and nobody important in them or anything like that but it's just i'm um all of a sudden i'm going through this process again now it's like uh the biggest thing is people are just really uncomfortable around it you know they're um nobody likes to be sad or depressed or anything like that but now all of a sudden you see the difference in your friends and the people around you you know you're like uh um you know you want to go just laugh and joke around have fun but everybody's processing the situation and uh know about it and understand it and so now it's just got this real weird aura about all of it and uh so you know, I'm at a point, you know, like I said, that everything is now in the hands of God. I can't do much about it. You know, it's not like they diagnosed me with high cholesterol and I can start doing sit-ups and adjust my diet. This is this is something that's way out of my hands. I mean, this thing's deep in my skull and, you know, it's really, it is in God's hands and in the hands of the surgeon. And, uh, you know, I have faith in both. Um, let's say I talked to the doctors here in, or the surgeons here in about, um, I don't know, August 3rd. So we're looking about, you know, just under two weeks and then, you know, we'll get all this stuff uh, done, man. And, uh, but I, I don't even, I guess my point of all of this, you know, guys is just don't take life for granted, you know, do not let a single minute pass that you, you know, because every minute that passes is one less uh, minute you have on this earth and and like I've told uh, people in my YouTube videos and stuff before um, you know and talking to you know like 20 year olds and they're like oh I got forever you know and uh, that's where you got to keep reminding them no the day after you turn 21 you're closer to 40 than the day you were born you don't have forever you know and you got to uh, start taking chances and just figuring life out and uh, you know just be it be at peace with everybody and everything as much as humanly possible. Just get, step away from the toxic people. You don't need to dive in, you know, disputes or do anything that's going to cause you any more, you know, stress or anything. You just, just be it, uh, at peace and appreciate every single thing in life. Like right now, uh, before this surgery, um, like I said, I have faith in everything, but at the same time, everything I do, I'm like, oh, God, is this the last time I'm going to do this? And, you know, and, or the risk of, you know, losing my eyesight or something like that. I'm like, oh, oh my God, is this, you know, every, you got to look and, and see everything, um, and every detail of everything that's around you. And, uh, like I said, I, I wish you guys the best, uh, and, um, you know, kind of keep, uh, things up to date as I get closer to this surgery and um should I not come out of it good or whatever you know I'll definitely have my wife post uh something you know just to follow up and and let you guys know but anyway you guys take care and uh I'll keep you posted